السلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي. We pray to belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We praise him and we seek his assistance and guidance and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the adverse consequences of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, then none can misguide, and whomsoever He misguides, then none can guide. And peace and salutations be upon the final messenger, our beloved master and teacher, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship besides one Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. My dearest brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and blessings and safety from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you all. It's a great pleasure for me to be here with you all in Nottingham uh, at Masjid Umar. And I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to share in this venue uh, some knowledge from the inheritance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this masjid a witness for us on the day of Qiyamah uh, of our presence and our eagerness uh, to learn from the rich knowledge of the Sharia. Um, I also extend a uh, heartfelt gratitude to um, the organizations uh, that are working together and uh, through this cooperation and collaboration, uh, this particular uh, talk has become a reality. No subhanahu wa ta'ala except from them as well. Uh, this is the first uh, visit here and uh, a first visit shouldn't be a lecture, but rather just a discussion and a chat. And especially given that it's a fine Sunday afternoon, and I know the Cricket World Cup is on, I'm sure there's uh, somebody who will be checking their phone uh, throughout the lecture just to check on the updates uh, in terms of whether England is going to remain in the World Cup or, or not. So it's not going to be too long. But inshallah, it's just a chat that I want to share with you all related to the way forward after. Uh, Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us uh, close to two months ago by sending to us uh, a special guest and uh, this guest uh, always visits yearly and comes with special gifts, noble gifts uh, but it's one of those guests that upon its arrival it never makes anybody sad it's not like one of these special guests that uh, we all wait for and uh, an announcement is made that they will stay at the home uh, that you know their convoy stops at. And when you know they are arriving, that everyone is peeping out the window making dua, that their vehicle stops at their doorstep. And uh, sometimes the vehicle gets very close to our doorstep, but it stops at the door just before us. And then we feel sad that Subhanallah, if only, if only, if only I bought the house next door or I rented the house next door then I would have received the special famous celebrity guest and all the presents that this guest comes with. Uh, the guest called Ramadan visited us uh, close to two months ago and it's special in that when it arrives, it arrives at all our doorsteps, at all our homes and it brings with it enough gifts for each and every one of us. It doesn't have a gift for some homes and then it runs out of gifts for the other homes of the Muslim uh, community. As soon as we see the Hilal, or the month of Sha'ban completes 30 days, Ramadan arrives excitedly. And it brings with it the gift of fasting, and the gift of Taraweeh, and the gift of Qur'an, and the gift of Laylatul Qadr, a night better than 1,000 months, and the gift of freedom from the hellfire, and the gift of Itikaf, and Qiyamul Layl, uh, standing the night in prayer and the gift of Salatatul Fitr and then the gift of Eid that comes at the end of Ramadan and this month came and as it came in a noble way it departed in a noble way and even though it's one month already almost really since uh, Ramadan has ended we all can still taste the bittersweet moments we felt uh, towards the 28th of Ramadan and the 29th of Ramadan and we were making dua to Allah that maybe Ramadan should be 30 days this year and that Saudi Arabia doesn't see the moon, right? We were making that dua so we have that extra day because Ramadan came and subhanAllah it went so fast. So you, we have, we, 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 we can, I mean we can taste those bitter moments, or at least I can. But also there were sweet moments because 
You know that after the end of Ramadan is the price given, the day of Eid, in which we receive our rewards and freedom from the hellfire, right? And um, in, in, in a narration which is weak, it is reported that the Prophet oh, it's questionable, some of the scholars have questioned its authenticity. It is stated that a person who passes away at the end of Ramadan is a person that will enter Jannah because they receive that prize at the end of Ramadan and then they pass away straight after. They pass away as a people having been freed from the hellfire. So the point is that we had these bittersweet moments. We, we were sad that Ramadan was going but we were excited because of the opportunity that it presented and Alhamdulillah we were guided to do what we did during the month and we received that reward. And just before Ramadan ended, we started promising ourselves and making ourselves uh, you know, uh, these promises that after Ramadan I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to make sure I, you know, I, I, I complete that and, I, and I, I, I practice that act and you know, I was introduced to this act in Ramadan and we were very excited and we were trying to lessen the blow by promising all this worship and all this servitude and all this righteousness uh, just before the day of Eid. And rightly so. Right, rightly so. A person who does this is a person who has appreciated the month that they were in. And they appreciate the sweetness of tasting their soul. Because really, your soul becomes alive in Ramadan. And when you taste it being alive, it brings to your life a sweetness that you don't really taste during other months of the year when your soul isn't engaged that way. We felt that, and no doubt Ramadan being a noble guest upon its arrival, didn't want to leave us stranded upon its departure. We can imagine that before Ramadan departed, Ramadan said to us, O oh servant of Allah and O oh child of Adam, thank you for your hospitality. It was a great month that we spent together. But before I depart, I want you to know that the Allah that you worshipped in Ramadan, He is the Allah of Shawwal and the Qa'da and the Hijjah and Muharram and all the other months of the year. Do not let yourself fall into uh, a vortex whereby you only worship this Allah during one month of the year or one day of the week or a few nights of the year or a few days of the year as you were diligent during our time together be diligent after my departure you do not worship me you do not worship fasting you worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sometimes it happens you know when I arrived in Africa towards the end of Ramadan I mentioned this to the congregation there that sometimes we see people say that you know what, I'm fasting, I'm not going to speak now. But after Maghrib, I'll, I'll speak. Right? So are you worshipping the fast or are you worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because the Allah you worship whilst you fast is the same Allah after, after Maghrib. Right? So, you know, we say, brother, after Ramadan, we will, we will deal with this case. Right? For now, let us busy ourselves with Quran. So we, have, we sometimes subconsciously, we have this attitude. And we, we, we sometimes we don't realize that we... We portray a behavior as if we're giving more importance to the act of worship rather than the one who is being worshipped through that act, the ma'bud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ramadan gives us this reminder that the Allah you worship in Ramadan is the Allah after Ramadan. And also we can imagine Ramadan saying to us that, O servant of Allah and O child of Adam, I came to the city a year before this year. And when I left last year, I was looking forward to coming to homes the following year. But I arrived this year and I found that those homes don't exist anymore. Those people return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know if I'm going to come to your home next year, whether this will be your Ramadan, your last Ramadan, or whether Allah will bless you with another Ramadan. So make sure you remember this advice. So after I leave, you don't fall back on your ways. After I leave, live your life in a way whereby I meet you next Ramadan if Allah allows you to live and I find you having progressed, not having taken many steps backwards. And whereby we back as square one and we try to build ourselves up again. Rather, I want to meet you next year and we build ourselves from at least where I left you this year. Right? Not where I found you this year. We can imagine Ramadan sharing this advice. And I think we appreciate uh, this reality that I'm sharing and the plausibility of this being the departing words of Ramadan because it makes sense, it's sincere, 
and indeed we are on a journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and any journey requires progress otherwise it cannot be called a journey if you're not progressing then you are you are moving but you're not on a journey to Allah if you're on a journey to Allah you've got to progress in your way towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this introduction Many a time, year after year, and this year is no different. In fact, this year, subhanAllah, I think it's a record. It's a record time. Within a few days after Eid, I would say three days after Eid, I received an email from a person to say, Shaykh, I need some advice. Because I really feel like I'm already going back to my old ways after Ramadan has ended. I already feel that, subhanAllah, you know, that Ramadan didn't even come. I really urgently need some advice. And this was a sincere email from a sincere uh, brother. And, 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 and in response to his uh, email, I uh, created a podcast speaking about the way forward after Ramadan. And I just want to mention two points from this short podcast that I mentioned in the podcast with you all in our short discussion and short chat uh, this afternoon. The way forward after Ramadan. The way forward after Ramadan. During my time visiting different communities and meeting different people, it's generally a common denominator that after Ramadan there is this fallback. There is this, I won't call it retrogression, but a form of regression. This happens, right? The best of us uh, feel this. And what I find with communities is they, send, they tend to become overwhelmed when they start tasting this regression. They, all, they become overwhelmed. And the reason why they become overwhelmed, firstly, is because they haven't appreciated the reality of the month of Shawwal. This is the first reality. That the month of Shawwal is not the month of Ramadan. And the other months of the year are not like the months of Ramadan. The help that we have in Ramadan, we don't have during the rest of the year. Aside of special seasons of worship like the first days of the Hijjah, which Allah will bless us with, inshallah, uh, shortly, may Allah preserve us in His obedience. Ameen. But even the first ten days of the Hijjah, these days don't have the doors of Jahannam being shut, and the doors of Jannah being wide open, and the Shiatin who disturb our worship being chained. This doesn't exist during any other month of the year. So we have to appreciate that Shawwal has the release of the enemy before Ramadan. That enemy is back. And that enemy comes back with a vengeance. Don't think for one moment that Shaytan and his disciples were not charging their batteries up during Ramadan <coughs> to make sure that they hit us as hard as possible from the advent of Shawwal, from the advent of their availability with us to bring this retrogression and regression into our life. Don't think for one moment this won't happen. If you don't think that this will happen, you have failed to recognize the reality of Shawwal. And this is what makes you overwhelmed. When you taste the regression and you become overwhelmed and then feel that you can't manage, you're just going to give up. Whenever you understand the reality, you have perspective. When you have perspective, you can strategize accordingly. This is how it works. So if you understand the month of Shawwal will have these challenges. This will allow you to have enough perspective to hold any regression, any uh, fallback that you have after Ramadan in its place, to not make it bigger than it actually is. So this is point number one, to, to help us move forward and ensure that we are better placed next Ramadan than we were this Ramadan, appreciate every other month of the year after Ramadan. Ramadan has great help in terms of our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Ramadan, we pray Salat al-Duha, we never used to even think about it. We were not regular with the Quran before Ramadan. In Ramadan, we were reading a juz, we are, we, are, we are flabbergasted. We are amazed how we were reading a juz. That subhanAllah, the day never ended. There was enough barakah, we were completing a juz and we never felt an itch of negativity or tiredness or difficulty with regards to it, right? We were waking up for Qiyamul Layl, SubhanAllah. We were praying the Sunnah of all the Salah, 12 units a day. We were counting our houses in Jannah for those days because whoever reads the 12 
units, or sunnah units in a day, Allah did both them a house in Jannah. The two before Fajr, the four before Dhuhr, the two after Dhuhr, the two after Maghrib, the two after Isha. Right? Allah gives us a house in Jannah. In Ramadan, we were doing it effortlessly. We never needed to convince ourselves. In fact, we had this acute focus on these acts of worship that we were so time conscious that we were making sure that before Zawal arrives, our Duha is uh, delivered. Or before uh, Dhuhr arrives, our portion of the day of the Quran is complete. And so on and so forth. We were making sure that as soon as Adhan would happen, we would start praying the Sunnah of Dhuhr. So we complete those four Sunnahs before the Farad of Dhuhr. We were so, we had this acute focus. This was in Ramadan. Now you're going into Shawwal, you're thinking to yourself, this is going to continue. It's not going to continue. It's not going to continue, especially if you weren't upon it before Ramadan. It's not going to continue. It's human nature. Illa ma rahim Allah, except the one that Allah showers His mercy upon. Right? So as we say respect Shawwal, also respect your reality as a human being. This is the next, this is point number two. To help you move forward after Ramadan. Accept your reality as a human being. You're not an angel. You are a human being. You have strengths. You have weaknesses. Respect that. Then respect the reality of the dunya. This dunya is not paradise where things happen as we desire. This dunya has days that are for you and days that are against you. You've got to respect that reality as well. Right? There are days that will give you time. There are days that won't give you time. The Prophet وسلم, sometimes did qada of sunnah acts, even i'tikaf, he did qada of i'tikaf. Because sometimes the dunya gave him a, a month or days where he, he, he missed that sunnah act. And because of his perfection in terms of his iman and connection to Allah, not only did he do qada of the wajib and the faraid or the obligatory matters, he even did qada of the voluntary matters, or those uh, uh, confirmed voluntary matters, like how he performed the two sunnah after thought after Asr once, because he got busy. The dunya provides these challenges. You've got to appreciate the month that you're in, you as a human being, the world that you're living in. It's important to bring the necessary perspective. So we, did, we, we said three points, right? Respect the month that you're in now, appreciate its reality, appreciate you as a human being, appreciate the world that you're in. Okay, these three realities need to happen. Now, in terms of you appreciating yourself as a human being, you have to understand that change and progress requires time. That is the sunnah of this world. It's a universal norm of life. Only in Jannah does change happen at the, at the, at the mere wish in your heart, all right? at the blink of an eye. In this world, to get to the top of the mountain, there's a journey that you have to undertake before you get to the top. You've got to appreciate that, brothers and sisters in Islam. Right? You can't get from zero to hero in an instant. There are steps, there are stages, there's a process, there's a strategy. Right? And when we look at the ayat of fasting, we find this message in there for us. And many a time this message is missed. Whenever we teach the ayat of fasting, we talk about our ability to fast because Allah tells us other human beings fasted before us. We talk about the concessions when you're sick or you're traveling. You can, uh, you can postpone your fast. We talk about how fasting is easy for you. It's not difficult because Allah says, Right? But in the ayat of fasting, right at the beginning and right at the end, Allah teaches us this message of respecting process and time in your quest to achieve that it's there it's there in three places the first place is at the end of the first ayah when Allah says La he says fast was no guarantee of that perhaps you may attain that right so immediately you understand that this is time bound right I'm going to fast in Ramadan, there's no guarantee I'm going to get taqwa. The quest for taqwa is a lifetime quest. Ramadan is to help us achieve it. But Allah is not saying, fast a month and you will get taqwa. He said, fast a month, perhaps you will attain taqwa. For some people, they need longer than that month. For some people, longer than just a year. So immediately when you ponder over the reality of the instruction, you appreciate 
that this is a time-bound process. Immediately after Allah says, for those who might not realize, Allah highlights it for, for us in an even clearer verse where He says, a a fixed number of days. And day is a concept of time. So Allah brings our attention to time. The quest to achieve taqwa needs time, and that time entails a fixed number of days. In terms of Ramadan, it's 29 or 30. In terms of you achieving it, it's the amount of days that you need to achieve it. Why did Allah say, Ayyad Allah do that? He could have said, fast the month of Ramadan. Like he said, the month of Ramadan is the month in which you review the Quran. He didn't highlight a month. He didn't highlight 29 days. He didn't highlight 30 days. We know this from the Sunnah, yes. But in his instruction, he said, Ayyad, days. But days that are enough for you to achieve your quest, if you're sincere in your journey. Because Allah said, Ma'adu that. You have enough life to achieve it. No one is going to be disadvantaged here. Allah has given you enough life to achieve what you need to achieve. You're not going to run out of time. In terms of the time that you need, everyone has enough time. That's the second ayah. The third ayah is right at the end of the ayat of fast. Allah says, Wadi tukminu Complete the appointed time. You must complete the appointed time. Right? In terms of Ramadan, it's 29 or 30 days. In terms of your quest of taqwa, the amount of days needed. You're not going to get it the day before. Complete your journey. Complete your time. When it took me to read that, Allah didn't say complete 29 or 30 days. He said complete the time period. So taqwa needs time. Which means anything and everything that helps us get to taqwa needs time as well. Right? It needs time. You need to appreciate that. In management, there's a common formula which states for organizational change to become acceptable to the people of the environment, you require <coughs> at least 40 days. They have this 40 day rule. Now, this is through observation, right? This is through observation. People who wrote these books, it's through observation. They see that when you bring change to your organization, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get pushed back in terms of this change that you're trying to create. Like now, Ramadan, you're trying to bring change in your life, Shaitan is giving you a pushback, right? Your nafs is, is, is not working with you at the moment. It's pushing you back. It's working with Shaitan more. So they say you're going to get pushed back from the management, from the different departments to when you enforce this, this massive change in the organization, but be persistent with it, be steadfast upon it, and within 40 days you'll see a climatization taking place between these departments and these individuals and these line managers and so on and so forth, and you'll see synergy come back into the organization. We see this in life today. Things go up, people protest, but the prices stay up, and then people finish protesting, they climatize, and then end up buying the, they end up buying the same product that no one is battling an item that hey we pay you know more than we need to. It's human nature. It's observation. We climb it. Is it we climb it up? Until there is the price again, and then we get excited again, then we climatize and we still uh, you know they say boycott this boycott that how long does it last nice? They don't say me I need my milk is still right. <laughs> right? I'm highlighting milk because there's an example in my head. So they call this the 40-day rule. And when I read this, I read it in many uh, a management book, uh, because sometimes I offer corporate mentorship from an Islamic perspective. So uh, I indulge myself uh, to be better educated in terms of how these industries work. So they have this constant 40-day rule. So clearly there's some form of observation that over a period of time they've understood that this is a corporate norm and this 40 days works. Shouldn't become overwhelmed within the first 40 days. Don't be overwhelmed because of the pushback and give up on your policy. And it's similar to the Ramadan discussion. Shaitan is pushing you back and you're giving up on your progress. Don't give up. And I was pondering over this and thinking, do we have something in Islam, in the Quran or the Sunnah, that could highlight this 40 day rule? Do we have something? 
This is Mujarrad, this uh, personal uh, deduction, personal journey. I came across the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, which is in Sahih Muslim. There's two versions of it. One version states, the version in Sahih Muslim states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gathers the, us as a creation in the wombs of our mothers as a droplet for a period of 40 days. Then he converts us into a something that resembles a hanging clot, mithladani, for 40 days. Then he converts us into a piece of flesh that resembles something chewed for 40 days, mithladani. Right? So we, Allah could have created us at the brink of an eye in completion. But he chose to create insan, the basis of us becoming a human being, in 40 day incubation periods. Maybe there's some wisdom here, Allah was best. This is a personal deduction that maybe there is some wisdom. Maybe insan is like this. We, we need the time to climatize. And before that, there's a necessary incubation period that needs to take place. Allah, as I said, this is a personal deduction. If it's correct, it's from Allah. If there's a mistake in it, it's from myself. But this 40-day incubation period makes sense even in our journey moving forward after Ramadan. That the ideals we want to bring into our life, they were sins before Ramadan, that we want to leave after Ramadan, or we might have slipped into it just after it. Don't become overwhelmed and cause yourself to feel like a failure. Carry on fighting. There's an incubation period you have to go through. Right? Carry on fighting. Maybe that Salatul Duha that you wanted to bring into your life before Ramadan and you couldn't. Ramadan helped you and you want to continue after Ramadan. But now you're starting to miss it. It's overwhelming you. Don't get overwhelmed. You're in an incubation period. You missed it today. Make intention sincerely to do it tomorrow. Carry on. See how you go. Right? Don't put yourself in such a situation where seven days of the week I have to take seven Salatul Duhas. And now that I miss it, I'm a failure. Right? Don't consider yourself a failure. If you're doing it at the end of the week and you miss two, three in the middle or even four or maybe five even, you just did the first day and the last day, there's still hope. You're in this incubation period, carry on fighting. The worst thing you want to do to yourself is give up and consider yourself a failure. And this is one of the negative matters of setting goals that I've come to learn over the years and mentoring some of the youth and even for myself. Sometimes when we become goal oriented, it's a good thing to do. But the negative aspect of being goal oriented is if you don't achieve your goal, you feel like a failure. If you set your salvation in you hitting that target, then you're doing a disservice to yourself because you're not recognizing what we said, your reality as a human being, the reality of the world that you're in, the reality of the months that you are in, right? You're not doing that. So some goals are good, but how we work with goal setting also, we need to mature ourselves. And sometimes we take the dunya we approach and apply it in our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just tick pass fail, pass fail, pass fail. But it's not like that. Sometimes you missed it, but you regretted it, and Allah rewarded you for it. That's a pass. The fact that you regretted it, that's from Iman. It's easy for Allah to reward you. That's a pass. Use that as an element of hope. So that tomorrow you apply yourself again. Right? When Allah teaches us about the people of Istiqaf, at the end Allah tells us He gives them these mighty gifts and Jannah and all these blessings He gives them. But at the end Allah tells us, Nuzulam al Ghafur al It was a gift from the most forgiving, the most mercy. To teach us that these people who died an amazing death and Allah gave them the best Jannah, they were not angels. They were people who were human beings. They tried some days and passed and some days they failed, but when they failed they sought forgiveness and Allah forgave them. And he showered his mercy upon them and still rewarded them. What matters to Allah is your sincere desire to try. So in this 40-day incubation period, as you're fighting change, well not fighting change, but fighting the forces that oppose change, should we say. Appreciate time as a process. And appreciate uh, this incubation period that you have to work your way through. The last piece of advice I want to share with you is the concept of burning in and not burning out. Because this is another mistake I find with our brothers and sisters after Ramadan. We overset our targets. So we burn out immediately. 
And in Ramadan, I was reading one juice. Before Ramadan, I was reading a quarter juice. After Ramadan, I'm going to read one juice. Is that going to happen? Let's be serious. With Shaitan there, with the doors of Jahannam open, with it being Shawwal, with, 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 with. If you're not doing it in the normal months, Shawwal is a normal month, right? So be realistic in your approach. Don't say I'm going to do one juice a day. Say I was doing a quarter before Ramadan, I'm going to do half after Ramadan. And I'm going to see how I go. I'm going to pursue half, right? See how I go first week, mashallah, doing half every day, it's easy, it's comfortable. Okay, if it's comfortable, try upping it the next week to three quarters, see how you go. Or half a juice in one more page, see how you go. Maybe in the second week you feel, no, 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 half a, half a juice in one page is a bit overwhelming. Go back to half a juice, this is burning yourself in. And continue for the next two weeks until you complete a month. Try it the next month, try increasing. If it doesn't work, go back. But work yourself up, burning yourself in. What's more important is you're not going backwards. Right? Being consistent upon a target is progress. Because you're not going back. So this is important. Burn yourself in. I was doing Salat al duha in Ramadan. Before Ramadan, I never used to pray Salat al duha Don't say I'm going to pray every day after Ramadan. You're going to burn yourself out. Say I'm going to pray twice a week. Let's see how I go. I was doing it zero before Ramadan. Twice a week is progress. See how I go. Try it. It might be easy. Make it three. Three might be too hard. Go back to two. But make sure you don't go to zero. Right? You're not going to zero. You're not going back to your old ways. Ramadan wants to see you forward next year, right? Try it like this. It might take you one year before you can do it three times a week. No problem. As long as you're sincere with Allah, Allah is a witness to your journey to Him. At least you're making an effort to better yourself for the sake of Allah. The Hajjul Salah, 30 days in Ramadan, because I was waking up to eat any of it, right? I never used to do it before. Start with one day, one night of the week. If one night of the week is too much, make it once every two weeks. If that is too much, make it once a month, but start. See how you go. Now once a month is getting easy for you. Maybe after six months you realize, hey, come on, I can do better. Once, once, it's too easy, it's effortless. Make it two, don't go to three. But if you see your Iman is at a level where you can push on with three, your schedule is at a level where you can push, give it a try. No problem. If you see it's too much, so it's, that's life, right? That's life. You're working with life. You're implementing things, you're tweaking things, you're doing this what we do in business, this is what we do in our, our job, this is what we do with life. We try a route, too much traffic, we try another route the next day, let's see how it goes. Right? So this is the same approach. In your journey with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, this is a project, this is your project with Allah. You got to also change things around, tweak things around, burn yourself in, don't burn yourself out. And inshallah, if you take care of these processes and this introduction that I've shared, inshallah, you have enough firepower ta'ala to be empowered, to improve with the passing of every month your journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the next Ramadan comes. When this Ramadan came, I was on a quarter juice a day. By next Ramadan, maybe I'm on half a day, maybe I'm on three quarters a day. This is khair. This is khair. But it's better than what I hear from many of the people I speak to who stop reading Quran altogether. And they say, SubhanAllah, six months has already gone. Six months time Ramadan will come, inshallah, I'll sort it out there. That's what happens. Right? That you burn yourself out. So maybe for the first two weeks of Shawwal you were there, but for now, 11 and a half months of the year, you're not there. Right? So be intelligent, brothers and sisters in Islam. Be people of perspective. Understand who you are, who you're not. Understand the reality of the month that you're in. And with sincerity, work your way towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't forget about dua. Dua is the weapon of a believer. All success comes from Allah. It emanates from Him. He is the owner of it, and from Him does it originate from. As Allah says, بَلِلَّهُ يُزَكِّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يُزَكِّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّحَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْحُسُوقَ وَالْإِسْيَانِ Right? Allah says, Allah says, that in, in, Allah says, instead it is Allah who purifies whom He wills. But it is Allah who purifies who He wills. Right? Instead, it is Allah who made Iman 
enter your heart and make it beloved to you and make sinning something hated to, uh, to you. It starts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.